Penny from Germany and you're watching the GTN show. It's the GTN show, welcome. And yes, I'm afraid it is just me again this week, but don't worry, we have got plenty of exciting news. We've got some ASOS kit to give away and we're gonna be looking at some of the racing from an action-packed weekend. And then on top of that, we have hot or not, and we're gonna be delving into some of your pain caves and plenty more. ever stopped mid-race to help another athlete who might have fallen over or having difficulty. Now I know that I'm guilty and I don't think I'm alone. Of Once that starter's gun goes, you get in the zone, a little bit blinkered, and it's all about your race and your performance. And I think, you know, to a certain extent, that's rightly so. It's what drummed into us from a young age as children when you're easily distracted, you're told by your parents or your coach that you've just got to think about that finish line and get there as quickly as possible. And I was brought up doing cross country running and people often fell over in that. And if I stopped to help every person I saw slip over or someone stopped to help me, I'd be a little bit surprised. And admittedly, I'd probably still try and beat them at the end. So it is a bit of a blurred line when it comes to that, but it was black and white for David Fries, a Navy medic, when he was competing recently in the Big Bear Triathlon. Now, admittedly, he was in the triathlon competition. There was a 5K race going on at the same time, and he saw this man collapse and heard someone shout, and he straight away forgot his own event and went straight over to help. And he ended up delivering emergency CPR, twice bringing the man's breathing and heart back to life and it ended up the medics arrived and managed to save his life getting to hospital in time and amazingly David actually got back onto his bike and continued to finish the race and ended up finishing second overall which is amazing that he could switch back into race mode and it just got me thinking when do we stop and when should you stay focused? I did actually stop once in a time trial event and I saw someone pushing their bike on the side of the road. It was on a dual carriageway. The weather was horrible and I was just a bit concerned about him. But I won't, I don't want to sound like I'm an angel because it was a 100 mile TT and I was, to be honest, a little bit lonely. I was cold and wet and I thought, any excuse to stop? Um, and I did offer him a spare inner tube. It turned out that he was running tubulars, so there was nothing I could do to help. So I had to carry on with my race. And yeah, that was still okay. But in this instance, an impressive performance. But it made me want to ask you guys, I think it is time for the GTN poll. And I want to know if you have ever stopped in a race to help somebody else. Just click in the link above my head with a yes or no. And if you have, do let me know what it was that you actually stopped to help for in the comments section below. Okay, well, I think it's time we had a quick look at the results from last week's poll. And we asked you, are you improving with age? Now, I know Mark and I were a little bit biased and we were trying to convince ourselves that we are, but it seems like most of you agree, just 12% said, no, you're not improving, and a whopping 88% said yes, so. I like that, thanks guys. Okay, let's head over to Challenge Roth and there was some very exciting racing on the weekend and I'm not forgetting that, we're covering it later on. But right now, I want to look at Kit because normally we have to wait till Kona to get all of the lists of what athletes are using, what bikes, what bits of components. But we've actually got a mid-season update well, triathlete.com actually looked at 2,200 bikes. And if we look just at the bikes to start with themselves, it was Sabello who came out on top with 269. No surprises there, but Canyon, 229. So not actually far behind. And apparently that gap is significantly smaller than what it was in Kona. Felt were in third with 142, specialized in fourth with 125. When it comes to wheels, Zip was still ruling, they had 469 um, over Mavic's 359, then a drop off to the rest. And then aero bars, a significant difference. It's profile design, 539 to 3T's 238. So not much competition there for profile design, but I think the interesting fact is more on the actual bikes and that gap is closing. So it'll be interesting to see come Kona or Cervelo do get a little bit of a threat from Canyon. It's giveaway time and ASOS have very kindly giving us four pairs of shorts to give away for free. We've got two pairs of the men's T Akeep Evo bib shorts and two pairs for the women's H La La Lay short. And if you want to know a little bit more about them, I actually did an unboxing video recently, so check that one out. And I can tell you from personal experience that the women's shorts are pretty comfy. I've done a lot of miles and had chance to wear them for the last year. And it's something about the chamois that I really like and the fact that it's not actually stitched the whole way around so it can move 
separately, just making it a little bit more comfortable. But if you want more details, check out that video. And you're probably now just desperate to know how you can get your hands on them. All you need to do is click on the link in the description below, fill in some details, and be on the chance of winning your very own pair. All right, it is time for the GTN caption competition. And last week we had this photo of Tyler Mitchellchuk from the World Cup in Antwerp, making a kind of owl type expression, I guess. Um, anyway, I have narrowed it down to three of my favorites. We've got two runners up this week. First one from Joshua Greeley. This new sighting technique was far more successful on dry land. And our next one in from Ashley Miller, another runner up when you ask for a serious photo and you just don't give a hoot. I like them both, but I love this one from Archie Taylor. I cannot see you, or I cannot see you. Do you get it? Hopefully you guys do. Obviously Archie did, I like that one Archie. Do give us your details so we can send this GTN cap to you. Now, if you want a chance to win your own GTN cap, we have a new photo for this week's caption competition and it is from the Ironman in Austria. Now, it does look like this poor athlete isn't moving. I haven't actually looked up to see who it is, but it looks like he might be being paced by a man out with his stroller. Love it. But do let us know what caption suggestions you have for this photo in the comments section below. Let's have a look at the GTN Pinkes for this week. I've chosen three of my favorites. We've got some good ones. This first one here is from Sense Fitness USA, and it looks very raw and ready. I love the walls with a, not sure if that's made to look so raw and ready, or it actually is, but nice matting on the ground as well. It reads, wake up and work out. Wow, a challenging FTP ladder this morning with Melissa Ain. 78 Elite Cycling and Go Swift in the Sense Fitness Pain Cave. Well, as you can see, two bikes set up side by side, two on the wall and space for some more. We've got weights there, the flag of the, U the USA and two turbos, very nice indeed. Well, our next one here is from Cowboy 452's Avatar. Mark Windsor sent this one in saying, riding so close to an 85 inch screen has led to motion sickness and the urge to lean the bike on the trainer while going round the bends. Well, that certainly is a large screen and that's a very large picture of Mark. You're brave riding that close to it. Don't tell him I said it. Um, but anyway, I do like this setup. You've got your mats and your foam roller and another massage tool. Lots of recovery emphasis here, also with your Normatec recovery system. Two sets of bike shoes next to your bike. Wow, it's certainly a lot of space to work with. I am very envious. And it looks like, by catching a glimpse in the mirror there, that your office is the other side of it. So if you get a little bit distracted at work, jump on the bike, that's the way to do it. Well, our final one this week comes in from David Bannister. What else would you use the garage for? Well, David, I don't know. I mean, who would put a car in their garage? What a silly idea that would be. Um, well, this looks like a very compact but use, uh, useful use of space, if that makes sense. You've got a treadmill, your bike on the turbo rowing machine, and a cross trainer. Well, again, some great pain caves, but we're nosy. We want to see your pain caves, so make sure you send them in over Facebook or Twitter using the hashtag GTM pain cave. Right, I'm starting race news with Ironman Austria, but I do have to address something other than the results to start with because there's a bit of a dark cloud over this event. Sadly, it is to do with drafting again. Now, I know we've talked about it before and we saw evidence after Ironman Texas of athletes taking advantage of motorbikes and being too close behind each other. Well, it's reared its ugly head again, but this time one of the pros has actually spoken out and made an official appeal. So there is a positive side to this because something has changed as a result. It was fourth place finisher and previous Ironman winner Susie Cheatham who decided to lodge this appeal and she's since released this statement which she's put on her social media. Now she says, many people may have been disappointed by scenes of drafting and motor pacing at Ironman Austria. I felt that unfair racing and officiating took part at the front of the women's race and that affected the results on the day. Present she presented a video and photo evidence um, against for the appeal against one of the top three girls for unfair drafting and against the race officials for inadequate marshalling, providing an unfair advantage due to inadequate moto discipline. Now apparently penalties can't be applied under the race rules 
rules, so action will be taken to advance all the female pros by five minutes from fourth place back. Now that hasn't actually ended up changing the final outcomes because Susie finished fourth and she was more than five minutes off the podium before that. But it is a significant fact that Ironman and the race organizers and the officials have listened and hopefully it'll get talked about a little bit more and now the athletes will see that changes are happening and things are being confronted. Fingers crossed, we're not going to be talking about drafting too much more. But anyway, I think we should have a quick look at the final results for Ironman Austria. And on the men's side, it was actually a home victory, the first home victory on the men's event for 20 years since its inception. And it was Michael Weiss who took the win in eight hours and four minutes, ahead of Ivan Tutikin, eight hours 13. And then third, it was Andy Potts in eight hours and 14 minutes. Well, on the women's side, we've already touched on the issues surrounding that, but the win did go to Germany's Maureen Hoof with a time of 9 hours 32 minutes. So it was down to a strong run that took her away from Lisa Hautaler in second. And then Emma Pallant, who had the lead for so much of the run, suffered some cramps in the heat towards the end to finish third. And it was Susie Cheatham who came home in fourth. The next event was the tough course of Ironman 70.3 Edinburgh and the men's race turned into a bit of a running event as six athletes basically went into T2 pretty close together and then it was down to that final half marathon. It was between Matt Chabrot, Will Clark and Ivan Yarridge and it was Yarridge who got the fastest run split of the day to take the overall win but it was incredibly close. He finished 4 hours 7.31 ahead of Chabrot, 4 hours 7.39 so the lead kept changing. Will Clark just dropped off a little bit towards the end to come home in third. And then on the women's side, it did change a few more times. And Fenella Langridge, the eventual winner, had a very strong swim and looked like she was going to maintain that lead. But it was on the bike that Nikki Bartlett posted a new course record to go into T2 in the lead. But then Fenella Langridge had stronger legs when it came to the run to take the overall win. So it was a strong day for Great Britain. as so Nikki Bartlett finished in second. And then third place, it was Martina Kuntz of Switzerland. Now the big race of the weekend was Challenge Road and it certainly attracted some big names to go with it and it did not disappoint. On the women's side there was a new German record and a win by just nine seconds. So it was Daniela Samler who beat the favourite Lucy Charles which I don't think anyone was expecting and it was an exciting race throughout. Obviously Lucy had an incredible swim. She got a new course record on the swim and looked like she was going to be very hard to catch. Well the excitement came on the run as Daniela Samler Samler took the lead but Lucy Charles was not going to give up and it stayed incredibly close, opened up a little bit more and then towards the finish it looked like Lucy was closing and she was, she closed to within nine seconds but Daniela Samler took the win, she got a new record for the fastest German female athlete on that course, Lucy had to settle for second and then third place it was Kaiser Sali who finished with an incredibly strong run. On the men's side, the margins were certainly clearer. It was the race favourite, Sebastian Keeley, who started as he meant to go on. He had a better swim than maybe people expected and then consolidated that on the bike where he is strong and maintained it on the run. He won by over six minutes, the first time he's actually won at Challenge Roth on his third attempt at trying. Well, in second, it was strong biker Andreas Dreitz. Third place, we had Jesse Thomas of the USA. Now, Mark was actually fortunate enough to be out in Roth and he got to catch up with some of the pros to find out how their race panned out. Right, we've got third place finisher, finisher Jesse Thomas here. Jesse, congratulations. Thank you. How did the race go down and amongst you as well with all the other competitors? Yeah, so um, I don't know what, what happened. I think some of the better swimmers just didn't really get out and, and get after it. But um, I was right up in there with uh, James and Luke Bell. I saw a couple guys and, and uh, I think Sebastian was right behind me. There were a, f a few other age groupers or some other pros kind of like right off the point of the, of the bike in the first five to 10K and then had two guys pass me, Andreas and another guy who I, I didn't catch his name and then came off feeling obviously pretty, pretty wrecked. But, um, you know, knew I had good run legs from a couple weeks ago, but knew that I wasn't going to be able to run what I thought I was going to off of that hard of a ride. And, um, but just worked my way up there and managed to pass a couple few guys and hang on for third. Right, we've got fourth place finisher here, Laura. Um, Laura, how did the race go for you? Um, a bit of a mixed day. Um, fourth is always that.
position and I think I was pretty close on closing down third but didn't quite get it in the end. Um, swim, I think, I haven't seen the splits yet. Um, swim, I think, was sort of pretty solid for me, like nothing amazing, but I don't think it was a complete disaster. And um, unfortunately, just had nothing on the bike today and the bike legs weren't there and really struggled to to find any rhythm or find any any real decent power and so it was just thought it was just going to be a really long day. Well now let's move on to Xterra and it was the infamous Xterra France which is known as one of the toughest Xterra courses in the world and as a result it attracted an incredibly strong field including none other than the men's reigning world champion Bradley Weiss but it is down to the bike course that makes it quite so challenging hence why you didn't catch me there this weekend. While it was the bike that decided it on the men's race this time and Ruben Rizafa really made his mark here. He came into the lead and then opened up a significant gap which no one could catch when it came down to the run so the win went to Ruben with Arthur second place it was Arthur Ferissier who's really having a strong season at the moment that run kept him in second and then it was a battle for third and fourth between Bradley Weiss and Arthur Serrieres but it was Weiss who came out top to finish third. On the women's side, it was another strong performance by Brigitte Poor. Coming off the back of her win at Exterra, Switzerland, she led out of the swim and didn't look back. Ended up taking the win quite convincingly in Exterra, France for her first victory at this race. And then the battle was on for second and third. And that was between Karina Vassler and Helena Kuriskova. And it was on the run that Kuriskova made the move, moved up to second ahead of Vassler in third, but at least Vassler still at the top of the European standings. Another event this weekend was the New York City triathlon and that attracted some big names and it was another battle between Cam Dye and Ben Canute and these two are getting pretty used to racing each other and as a result they swam together and they looked like there was very little separating them on the cycle as well so it did come down to the final 10k run and Canute managed to just start to edge ahead and took the win over Cam Dye and then it was Jason West who finished third. Well, on the women's side, it started off neck and neck between Sarah Haskins and Lauren Goss, very little separating them out of the water. But it was then on the bike that Sarah Haskins started to edge away from Goss and she ran a faster split as well to take the overall win. So Lauren Goss had to settle for second and then a minute back, it was Cecilia Davis-Hayes in third. It's time for GTN Tribe, where we get to have a look at a specific club in some detail. And this week, we're heading to the Philippines. Now, there's no rule on the size of the club. And this week, we're keeping it fairly small with Team Alex T12. Now, they've sent in some info about their club, and they say they're around just 20 members strong. But don't worry, they make up for that size with effort because the majority of them, apparently, have completed multiple Ironman events, including Ironman Melbourne, Ironman Barcelona, and most recently, and pretty exciting for them, I'd guess, the inaugural Ironman Philippines. So getting to compete on home soil is pretty awesome. And their age groups are in the late 30s up to late 40s, so a fairly small span as well. Families come during the races and that creates that atmosphere of not just team spirit, but close family spirit as well, which sounds pretty cool. Well, they've told us a little bit about the team name. It's a little interesting story of how they got there. So apparently they were formed in 2012 and had 12 members. Well, that was how they came about the name T12. But there's an addition because their main sponsor this year is a car restoration shop owned by the team captain, Alexander Isip. So they're now Team Alex T12. I mean, makes sense, I guess. And we love to have a look inside your club. So do let us know whatever size you are. As you've seen this club, just 20. We've had clubs of up to 200. We want to know what happens in your club, what you get up to, what training you guys do together, what races you go to, anything. If you've got any videos, amazing. Send in some photos, a little bit about your club, and then we will feature it on our GTN tribe. <laughs> Right, it's time for Hot or Not. And we're gonna dive in with a rumor to start with. Now, it's probably gonna materialize to something much more than a rumor because it has been spotted on Mark Cavendish's Instagram account. And being an ambassador of Zwift, he's probably gonna be in the know. And this is rumors of a new course coming out on Zwift. Apparently from the pictures, people who know New York fairly well have recognized some landmarks and it looks as though this course might be going through Central Park in New York. So it's certainly one to keep an eye out for. If you can't afford to get over to the States and have a ride around yourself or you want to be somewhere a bit safer, I think we need to keep our fingers crossed that that one's coming our way. So let's say it is, and if so, it's definitely a big hot. 
I'm gonna start off this next one by saying straight away that it is sadly a big knot. We're getting a bit used to seeing triathletes getting knocked off their bikes or cyclists recently, and sadly, this is another one of those. It's Terenzo Bazzoni who put out a tweet a couple of days ago that said, Terenzo was in an accident this afternoon in Cumio. He has the emergency department, he's in the emergency department where his injuries are still being assessed. If anyone has any information, please contact the police. They'd appreciate respect of privacy at the moment. And there's been a few other reports that he is conscious in hospital. So we are wishing him well, and hopefully that gets resolved and he gets over his injuries as soon as possible. Next, we have the release of the new Wahoo Kicker Climb. Now you might've seen this a while ago, but it wasn't actually available for order. You can now pre-order it. Deliveries are coming out from mid-July. Now this basically enables the rider to ride indoors and simulate going uphill or downhill. As the front of the bike is attached, it moves up or down. You can use it with Zwift. Well, it's compatible with the new Kicker and the Kicker Snap, so a great way to spice up your indoor training. And if you want to know a little bit more about it, Mark actually did a video on indoor trainers and he got to ride on this and seemed a big fan. I can't wait to give it a try myself. I'd say it's a hot. Well, that's it for this week's show. And if you want to catch all of our videos from GTN, just hit the globe to subscribe. But don't forget that you've got a chance to win some ASOS shorts. And to be in with that chance, just make sure you click on the link in the description below, fill in your details. And if you want to know a little bit more about those shorts, well, check out the video I did on the ASOS unboxing just here.